Hello, everyone. It is Jacqueline Howard with the Flying Dog Foundation and Ellen Ganopoulos, also with the Flying Dog Foundation, Para Espana. And uh, we are here today with Jill. Jill, I want to say your last name right. Brunton? Brunton, yes. Brunton. Oh, very good for me. Um, <laughs> And uh, Jill is going to talk to us about something uh, very dear and dear to our hearts, and that is the Male Galgo Project, which mm -hmm. is uh, going on in Spain. I'm going to hand it over to Ellen, who can uh, get us kicked off with that conversation. Well, thank you so much, Jacqueline. And Jill, thank you so much for, for being here and sharing your time and your knowledge of the Male Galgo Project with us, because we have questions and you have answers. So we're excited <laughs> to pin you thank down. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you for having me. <laughs> thank, thank you. Okay, so now the Male Galgo Project, I'm gonna tell you, you know, we have an idea of, of what it's about. Um, and we know that it's a project that focuses on getting um, the, the male dogs out of various shelters and under the safety net and the umbrella of um, your organization, Galgos and Familia, correct? Yes. Um, it's a collaborative effort and um, it helps get dogs that would be hard to adopt, that wouldn't shine, the dogs that need that special attention and that spotlight to get adopted. This is our understanding. So the first question I want to ask you is, um, why are male dogs considered less adoptable than female dogs? Hey, Ellen. Yeah. Ellen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the worst person. I'm interrupting. I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to add because because uh, I didn't mention this. Uh, Ellen and I are both in uh, New Jersey in the United States. Jill is in Spain. Yes, in Malaga, Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now okay. that we all know, th thank you for mentioning that, Jacqueline. <laughs> so anyway, yes, yeah, that was our question. Like, you know, what is it about, you know, that makes a male dog a little less adoptable than a female dog or a lot less adoptable than a female dog in Spain? Can you tell us what's going on yeah. with that? Well, to be honest, there's no one particular reason. It's just that most people prefer females either because of the, um, they've already got males in the home, so they don't want to add more males to the pack, to the family. Or, and also because females are usually smaller in size. Okay. So, you know, those are the main reasons. All right. So that's something that coming yeah. from, you know, Greyhound world that, you know, where we yeah. come from, um, we do know that there are some people who prefer a small female to a male yes. because of size. Okay. So that's yes. it's just, I guess, basically the same mm -hmm. thing. Yes. Um, another question that we have was, um, can you tell us, where you know where do the dogs come from what are the the places that the dogs are coming from to come into your organization to the male gogo project right most of them come directly from the hunters themselves wow. uh, we have, okay. yes we have contacts in different areas of spain and um the hunters usually contact us through those people okay. and, they ask, and they ask us to take the dogs yeah wow okay and what kind of male dog would benefit from the project? Like, what are the characteristics of a dog that you're looking at this dog and you say, you know what, this guy is going to be, he, he's a prime candidate for the male go, -go project. What would you be looking for? Well, normally we accept any dog, any male dog. We're not um, picky or, you know, we don't just take the nice ones or the pretty ones or the easy ones. That's we'll for sure. Whichever, whichever <laughs> dog is in need. You know, so and if they're in danger, if there's a danger of them being abandoned, okay, left in the the kill stations or something, you know, we do try and take them quickly as well. Now, when yeah. you say a kill station, is that we're going to think that's equivalent to um, a kill shelter in yeah. in the United States? Is it the same? Pretty much the same concept? Yes, uh, where... yes, yes. A, a kill station, a kill, um, a dog pound. It's the municipal um, shelters pounds. Um, government run ones that um, they take in a certain amount of dogs and they not all of these places do uh, put to sleep any of the animals a lot do still do that so um, you know they they might take as much certain amount of dogs and if they find them to be ill aggressive or just too many of that breed or something they might 
you know, be the first ones to be put to sleep. Okay. So um, you're now the male Galgo project focuses on the male Galgos who are coming into yes. not only coming from the hunters, but are coming from these shelters yes. um, that, you know, you're, you're taking the chances from this dog. It's my understanding, uh, you know, and just greatly improving them by spotlighting mm -hmm. the dog, um, working with any issues that the dog might have. And yes. would you say, I'm going to say just from watching the project and the dogs that you bring in, I see that fear um, for the, a fearful dog is a lot of the problems. What other kind of issues, or can you talk about that? Like, what are some of the um, yeah. issues that the dogs have? Well, obviously, like you've said, uh, a lot of them do have a lot of fear. Okay. You know, they've, they've lived through a lot of trauma, so they're quite fearful. We have a lot of dogs as well that have old fractures that need oh. to be seen quite urgently by the trauma vets. Okay. Uh, we have some that need operations because of that, you know, and then there's also all the illnesses. There's leishmania, you know, uh, there's heartworm, there's, you know, lots of different illnesses that they might have that are not uh, being looked at and treated where, where they are before they come to us. So we need to get them seen to by the vets quickly and then if needed in treatment, put in treatment. So Okay. So are these dogs relatively young when they get to you or do they span a lot of ages? We have a lot of different ages, but normally they average, say, about between four and eight. Some wow. do come in younger, you know, it it depends, you know, but um, we'll, we'll take any age. We had, we've had some recently, I mean, not specifically in, into the male Galgo project, but into our shelter. We've had some that have been, you know, eight, 10, 10 years old, you know. So um, we have two old ladies that are at the shelter, not in the Mel Galgo project, but they thir they are 13 years old. They've come to us after years of all their lives being used for breeding. So, you know. Um, okay. So the males normally, uh, the males, sorry, the males that go into the project are normally uh, between, say, three and six years old. Okay. What, what are some of the reasons that the hunters give for giving up the dogs? Um, well, usually it's because the dogs um, aren't fast enough, aren't clean enough in the hunt. You know, what they cut that? corners. That means when they're, they're chasing the, the rabbit, they cut corners. They don't take the, pro they don't follow the route that the, the rabbit is taking. Okay. They cut the corner. So that's, that's a definite thing that they do not like. You know, that's not a good uh, sporting skill of the dog. So they, they don't like that. So that dog is of no use to them. Obviously they're no use once they've broken a leg because they don't treat them normally. So um, then that dog is of no more use to them either. And then some of them, if they're of a uh, good stock, they will keep them for breeding. So they come to us maybe a little bit older. Hmm. Okay, so these these dogs, and this is something that I think as Americans, we're kind of, um, well, at least I can say, I'm a little not, not perfectly clear on. These dogs are being used for the sport of hunting, not yes. so much for food. They're not going out and no. hunting the rabbits that they're going, this is that a family is using for food. Somewhat like we have our people here that deer hunt. Yes. And they're, they're not mm -hmm. deer hunting for sport as much as they are for the venison. So you're telling me that, so when you said that they're cutting corners, so this is a sport that these yes. dogs, there are rules. And if you have a dog that is not following the rules, kind of like a racehorse that decides to, I guess, cut across the, yes. the track, um, this is a dog that they're not gonna find much use for. And from what you're telling me, I'm gonna assume that these dogs are not gonna live out their natural lifespan in mm -hmm. the, home of the hunter, they're going to basically be given up when they're of no longer use for the sport. Is this, yes. this is what you're telling me. Okay. That is, that is normally the case. Yes. Okay. The majority, the more majority are used as uh, in hunting for sport, for the fun of it, for the com com camaraderie of it. And um, you can't say that not uh, some of them aren't used for, for catching rabbits for food. But okay. the majority is for, for hunting, yes. Okay. Is, is there a season to hunting in Spain yes. or in your area? What is the season? Yes. The season's uh, from October to February. 
Okay, and that's their prime hunting season? There's that's, that's season? the prime season, yes. For it. Okay. They, they also will go out the rest of the year uh, practice, you know, okay. to let them practice and whatnot. But the, the season itself is, is between those months, yes. And is there a time of year when you're going to see more dogs giving up, um, given up by the hunters than other times of the year? Um, originally, when we first started, uh, we did notice more of a, uh, a demand for us to take dogs at the end of the hunting season. Okay. Uh, but nowadays, it's we year have round? a high demand all year round, yeah. Mm. Okay. Wow. And, um, you know, some of us have been following um, the laws and things that are going on in Spain uh, when it comes to animal uh, animal cruelty, things like that. Um, and we did see that um, the gal that goes, the hunting dogs, and I don't know if, you, if it's specifically a breed or if it's any dog that's been used for hunting, um, there is an exemption uh, to the cruelty laws for those dogs. I don't know if this is something you can speak on, but if you can, we'd sure love to hear about it. Yes, uh, unfortunately, it's it's true that the hunting dogs, not just galgos, podencos, and other breeds um, that are used for hunting here in Spain, have been left outside of that law, so they are not protected as your normal pet would be. They class that a hunting dog is not the same as a pet. Even like you can have a great a galgo in your home, that dog has so so many more rights. That, and you know protection whereas a galgo that's used for hunting has no protection whatsoever here in the in the registry when you register your dog with um you know with its microchip and everything they have uh what it's what it's for what that dog is for okay and it will say for hunting or for companionship or for commercial use so all okay. the dogs that come to us they have in in that um, box, they have written down hunting. So we, when we do take the dog and we change the dogs into our names, into Galgo's in familiar name, we then put it for um, companion, family, pet. Hmm. Okay, that was actually a really tough question. Thank you for answering. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, you know me, I go on my tangents and I'm just like, yeah. wait a minute now, how does it? So yeah. Yeah, it, it's my understanding that, um, all dogs in Spain are supposed to be microchipped. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All dogs are supposed to be microchipped and registered. Yes. Okay. Because over here, um, we don't. It, the microchip is not a requirement. Yeah. Uh, no. Here, here it is. Suggested. Yeah. But, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this brings us to the male galgo project. Um, you know, for our people yeah. watching uh, this video, uh, this this project is incredibly important um, to these dogs. And it's something as, you know, you know, I've been going back and, you know, forth for so many years to Spain to do transports. Um, and I often ask, um, I, I'm always hoping to get the answer. I'm like, how are things doing? Are they slowing down? And you guys are like, oh. you know, <laughs> you know, and you could just see that, you know, and I just always hope that things are getting better, but you are, from my knowledge, you are always inundated with uh, a never ending stream of dogs in need. And, you know, let me take a moment just to tell you how appreciated you are. I don't know if you know how appreciated you. you are, especially over here. Um, you guys are doing things that are just absolutely, uh, you know, you are doing mighty, mighty things and great deeds. Um, thank you, first of all. And, um, you know, our foundation has decided to sponsor uh, two slots in the Male Galgo project. And that's what we're fundraising for right now. Um, what else, is there anything else you can tell us about the Male Galgo project? But how many dogs would you say you have in the Male Galgo, Galgo project at a time? Normally at one given time, we will have 10 dogs in the Male Galgo project. Okay. Um, so sometimes if there's an emergency situation where we need to get a dog out fast and we don't have space anywhere else for the dog, we will ask you if it's possible to for us to take an extra dog. We've never been turned down yet, so thank you all for that. <laughs> um, and so, but normally it is ten dogs. Yes. Okay. And um, it, it, can you tell us anything else about the Male Galgo project? You know, that I haven't asked questions about. Well, the the Male Galgo project is it's. A great help to us, to Galgos in Familia. We appreciate it 
very much. It's a good, um, it's like a, oh, how would you, I don't know, I'm just thinking of the word then in Spanish, but I can't think of it in English now. But it's a, it's a good. And you know how good my Spanish is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a big, well, it's a big support to us. So we know that, because our shelter is always full, always, yeah. you know, so when we do get these um, urgent requests for help, you know, we know we can rely on you for for that extra support. So that is a, a great help to us. So yes, yeah, so many dogs have been helped um, because of the Male Galgo project over the years. I mean, I can tell you that in total so far, there's been 152 dogs, wow. extra dogs wow. for us that have been helped. So, you know, that's amazing. That's really amazing. Yeah. It, really, it really is. And, you know, a lot of times, like people, people rightly so look at or put a great focus on how it changed those dogs' lives for the better. Yes. But also ancillary to that, mm -hmm. it has made their adopters' lives better. Yes. Because, you know, those, those, the adopters are getting that new family member, someone who's going to give them that unconditional love. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a big deal. So I would say like being an animal rescue, dog, cats, whatever it is, um, it's it's not just helping the animals; it's helping the people as well. I mean, I don't know all of my animals, but except for one, are adopted. I don't know where I would be, you know, without yeah. without them. Yes, yeah, definitely, that's... most definitely. I think we've all we've all got rescue or adopted dogs, you know. So I couldn't imagine my life without mine. So you know, I know that the amount of people that are out there that think exactly the same, and we all love our dogs or cats, guess... whichever breed it is, you know. When, when you look at it too, it's like you're taking, you're doing actually something else that's pretty incredible. Uh, you're taking a dog that life has not been for companionship. And I, I do believe that dogs are companion animals and are, that's what their, their purpose should be. Uh, you're taking dogs that have not been used as companion animals and you are turning them and you're giving them an opportunity to be companion animals. So more than all of the work that you're doing with getting them through their fears, if they have them getting them through your medical issues, you know, getting them past all of these, you know, things that would, yeah. would make their, their adoption a little bit more difficult. Um, you're actually transitioning them from hunting, hunting dog to family dog, uh, companion yeah. dog, which again is just an amazing and great feat uh, that we truly do appreciate. So, uh, you know, you guys are, you guys are rocking it over there. You know, we love you. <laughs> we love what you're doing. With the male galgo project and of course at uh your the shelter well I, I think that a lot of these dogs as you know wouldn't um wouldn't be noticed would be left where they are you know so thanks to the male galgo project they they are able to ha like you've just said have a life have a family and you know it's an it's an amazing amazing project and it's working wonderfully. You know, it's great, sure. amazing yeah. what we're all doing and everybody that helps, that donates, that organizes, you know, across across the pond and over here, you know, we're all, all together. We're, we're doing so much to help these dogs. And it doesn't matter if people can donate $1 or $50 or whatever it is, it helps. It really does help to make their lives much, much better. Well, certainly, you know, the, your accomplishments and those numbers are just uh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you guys have definitely been accomplishing what you set out to do for this uh, specific need. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, dogs in dire need are our specialty, but we tend to focus on. So we, we certainly do love the project. Um, you know, we love that you came to talk to us about it. Uh, Thank Jacqueline, you. I don't know if you have any more questions about the, uh, the, the Male Galgo project. Uh, no, uh, I just want to say like, you know, when you, when you look at what, uh, I'm so philosophical today, when you look at what <laughs> you, you look at what's going on like, around the globe today, it's a, it's a messy, messy place. Um, what I love is that, um, through, through the work of Galgas and Familia, the Mel Galgo project, Flying Dog Foundation, we have people coming from across the world. I mean, you know, like yeah. I know Galgas and Familia has supporters all over the world as as do we, all coming together for this common good, this one yes. thing and, uh, and it's making a positive impact. And, um, you know, I, I really do believe there's more people like us 
in the world than they are the bad. It's just the bad get like so much freaking attention. But, um, yeah. you know, but, but I love that. I love that we're able to have this conversation and, you know, across the ocean and, um, and make a difference, you know, as uh, our motto at the Flying Dog Foundation is rescue knows no borders. There's no such thing as a border, you know, rescue is a yes. rescue. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah, you, I couldn't have put it better myself. It's it's amazing that we all come together. We can all do so much. We can do so much to help these, these dogs, um, to see them from where they come from. You know, they're, in ter- they're not in the homes of the hunters normally either. They're in kennels or they're in, you know, backyards and kind of things. So to see where they start from, to see where they end up on everybody's sofas, because that's where they always end up on people's sofas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it's it's an amazing <laughs> achievement that we all manage to do together. So yeah. It's great. As we say, they're they're not real cuddly. It's like it's like cuddling um a, a lawn chair. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. legs but they're very lovable uh, you know they're wonderful dogs yes. and uh yeah so again a great project uh it is wonderful talking to you uh, our supporters thank you uh for for enabling us to uh, sponsor those two slots in the program we have that great galgos united uh lunch for a donation of 100 plus you get that wonderful uh galgos united lunch box show your love uh, for the Male Galgo Project, for Jill, for, for all you do um, with the Male Galgo Project and all of your rescue work. Again, just thank you all so much for everything you're, you're doing. It's, you know, it's, it looks as though it's something very simple and very easy, but it not, it's changing lives, it's saving dogs, and it's amazing. So thank you all really so much yeah, for well, what you're doing as well. You. Thank Without you. you, we couldn't do it. So thank you. Okay, our love to you yeah. and the rest Thank of the, you the team, and uh, congratulations on such a successful program. Really great stuff. Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. Okay. Okay, everyone, we are going to we are going to sign off. We will put up the links on the screen of where you can donate to help out the boys in the Male Galgo Project, and you will be making a difference. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you to everyone for watching. Adios. Thank you. <laughs>